Hello, I'm Greg Miner. You're listening to a late 1920s recording of the greatest harp guitarist who ever lived, Pasquale Tarafo of Genoa, Italy. The rare 78s in Victrola are a gift from my friend Franco Gisalberti. Twice now I visited him in Genoa to conduct research on Tarafo, the results of which we've archived on the harpguitars.net website. This film chronicles our third adventure together as we attempt to reveal Tarafo's incredible performance techniques. It's hard to believe there was a time when Tarafa was completely unknown outside of Genoa. I only found out about it myself some dozen years ago through Beppe Gambetta, the contemporary flat-picking guitarist who also hails from Genoa. Though Beppe doesn't play Tarafo's style of guitar, he's done much to spread the music and legacy through special tours and recordings. Beppe was selling this CD on one of his American tours, and when I heard it, I couldn't believe my ears. Tarafo sounded like two or three guitars playing simultaneously. You'd hear melody, harmony, accompaniment, and sub basses all at once. It seemed impossible. Who was this guy? I had to get him up on the website. And so Beppe introduced me to Franco Gisalberti, the original producer of the Blue CD, a collection of Franco's own 78s. I was thrilled to discover that Franco was not only a record collector, he was Tarafo's historian and had amassed a treasure trove of amazing original playbills and other documents. He even had a complete copy of the Tarafo family scrapbook, which Tarafo's own grandson had allowed Franco to borrow and duplicate. There were personal photographs of Tarafo, his family, his musical colleagues, the harp guitars, just an incredible time capsule. And Franco spent years researching who was who in all these photos, putting that together with the newspaper clippings and concert programs from around the world to create Tarafo's timeline and biography from all this priceless ephemera. All of this has now been archived on harpguitars.net, but there was one nagging mystery remaining. How did Tarafo do what he did? His melodies often sounded like a mandolin rather than the standard tremolo that classical players use where the three fingers skip every fourth beat and the thumb does a separate line. Tarafo's tremolo sounded continuous, something none of us had ever heard. Beppe once mentioned a rumor that Tarafo may have used his ring finger back and forth like a mandolin pick to create his tremolo. As in... Is this what Tarafo did? Well, we now have that answer and much more. It turns out that there was once a surviving eyewitness who saw Tarafo play. And I was flabbergasted to learn that one of Franco's own guitarist friends had studied with this witness. His name is Fabrizio Giudice. Fabrizio is an outstanding guitarist from Genoa who originally transcribed Tarafo's music for six-string guitar. In the last few years, he has been tackling this same repertoire on harp guitar, so Franco and I enlisted Fabrizio to document note for note, finger by finger, all of these special techniques for us. The secrets of Tarafo finally revealed. I asked Fabrizio to tell us about his career and how he became interested in Tarafo. Un chitarrista classico, insegnò al conservatorio di Cuneo, ho studiato, dopo, dopo aver studiato con Bersano, ho studiato all'Accademia Chigiana con Oscar Ghiglia, ho, suona, ho studiato anche con Angelo Gigantino, altri maestri, suono nel duo novecento da 25 anni, flauta e chitarra, molti compositori hanno anche dedicato musiche al nostro duo e mi occupo anche degli strumenti storici di Genova, 
come la, per esempio la chitarra di Mazzini, come la chitarra del Garibaldino Schiaffino di Camogli, come la chitarra di André e altre chitarre che, che sono presenti nella nostra regione. <coughs> Ho cominciato a suonare grazie a mio papà. Mio papà mi ha, mi ha dato i primi rudimenti e mio padre aveva studiato insieme a Carlo Paladino e Anselmo Bersano. Carlo Paladino e Anselmo Bersano sono stati dei testimoni proprio oculari di Taraffo. L'hanno visto suonare e mi ricordo da bambino che anche in casa mia si suonava, per esempio, la Stefania di Taraffo. Mio padre la, la suonava. L'interesse verso Taraffo è quindi nato subito in casa. Ma la svolta decisiva l'ho avuta quando, mh, grazie a Enrico De Filippi, che mi fece sentire una cassetta di Taraffo, mi misi poi dopo in contatto con Franco Ghisalberti, il quale mi fece avere gli originali 78 giri di Taraffo. Da quel momento ho avuto una folgorazione, mi sono messo a tirare giù, proprio nota per nota, dallo spartito, i brani composti da Taraffo. A quel punto poi ho avuto un contatto editoriale, li ho pubblicati e ho cominciato a suonarli, dapprima sulla chitarra a sei corde e poi pian pianino, anche qui di nuovo grazie a Franco Gisalberti, quando ho potuto avere una chitarra come la Gazzo, la, la chitarra di, del, di Utaio Gazzo, ho cominciato a studiare la chitarra arpa, dapprima con soli tre bassi, poi quattro, poi cinque, magari in futuro aggiungerò altri bassi fino ad arrivare a otto come taraffo, però penso che cinque o sei bassi possano bastare per suonare la musica di taraffo. Taraffo was unique in Italy for commissioning instruments with eight basses rather than the typical three to six. Skipping E flat, he tuned them from D chromatically down to G. But as Fabrizio pointed out, typically his music only called for two or three in any given piece. In 2010, I was fortunate enough to be allowed to examine Tarafo's personal harp guitar at the Paganini Conservatory, where we were able to determine that it still had its original sub-bass strings. They were silk and steel with a steel core, and surprisingly light in gauge. Sadly, the next strings had been changed by another guitarist in the 1950s and were long gone. We'll discuss their particular riddle in a few moments. Yes, examining Tarafo's personal harp guitar was awe-inspiring. But the most amazing find of all was several years ago when my colleague Michael Simmons, co-founder of the Fretboard Journal, learned of an impossibly rare film clip of Tarafo playing and arranged a viewing for a small private group of us. I still remember when I first saw it. That was a holy grail moment. It was like watching a sleight of hand magician rather than a guitarist. Questo breve filmetto di Taraffo è fatto parte di un provino che è stato fatto per eseguire poi un film un filmino di 6 di 6 minuti non di più che venivano a quell'epoca proiettati in anteprima di un grande spettacolo, che poteva essere uno spettacolo di Guadalupe o poteva essere anche un lungometraggio. Questa è la rosanza dei grandi artisti di allora. When I studied the video at extremely slow speed, I could swear that Tarafo was playing his 16th note 4-4 melody, not with two fingers, but with three. I now had a chance to ask Fabrizio if I was crazy. No, no, non sei pazzo. Tarafo, che veniva detto a ruota, usava appunto questo caratteristico movimento delle tre dita, anulare, medio e indice. Abbiamo visto come questo movimento veniva fatto anche con l'uso del braccio, muoveva anche il braccio, si aiutava anche col braccio, probabilmente per avere ancora più forza anche nelle dita, visto che non suonava amplificato e doveva farsi sentire. These are period photos of some of the very theaters where Tarafo performed. And from all accounts, their audiences of up to 1,500 were able to hear him. How? This harp guitar by Satimio Gazzo is virtually identical to Tarafo's own. His carved scroll was the same wallet until he painted it gold. I had a simplified version of his famous stand made for a display. And when one can stand behind it and play, the back is free to resonate. 
and I notice a definite damping effect on mine if I cradle it as I would in my lap. It's possible that Tarafo's large hollow stand also acted as an additional resonator. And Fabrizio pointed out how Tarafo's unique finger and arm movements added extra power. All of these things combined with his special strings undoubtedly contributed to his volume and projection. Surprisingly, for all Tarafo's virtuosity, which Fabrizio will demonstrate next, Tarafo never worried about damping his bass strings like most of us do today. In the film clip of him playing Stefania, we see that Tarafo used strong rest strokes on the sub basses. These rest strokes on descending strings appear to be the only method of muting them. Of course, it doesn't work in the opposite direction. So when he closes Stefania with his B7 to E minor, he simply lets the low B ring. You can hear it on the 78 record and see it on the video. Of course, it may be that Tarafo simply liked the extra sound. Let's return now to Fabrizio for a look at his instrument. Questa chitarra è una Gazzo Stimio, lo stesso liutaio di Pasquale Taraffo. È una chitarra del 1909 e mi è stata regalata gentilmente da Franco Ghisalberti. È una chitarra che ha sei bassi volanti, sei bassi, più le sei corde normali. Ha ancora, come vedete, i bischeri, i piroli, e quindi ne rende difficile la cordatura. Attualmente monto delle corde in Eilgat, ah, in budello sinte sintetico, per ottenere l'effetto, diciamo, del budello. Io penso che dall'ascolto dei dischi e anche dalle testimonianze numerose di alcuni personaggi che hanno conosciuto sia Tarafo che i suoi allievi, pare che il cantino fosse di acciaio. Still. Mm. <ride> I was taken by complete surprise by Fabrizio's statement about a steel string on Tarafo's guitar. But the topic of Tarafo's harp guitar being strung with steel has come up multiple times in my research and can no longer be simply dismissed. Franco himself always insisted that the recording sounded more like a steel string guitar and on one trip he showed me why. Using his best Victrola, he played a 78 record of Mazzani, the famous classical harp guitarist, then played a Tarafo recording which was twice as loud as Mazzani's. It didn't sound quite like steel strings to me, but it did sound brighter and the projection was incredible. But I thought I had a partial explanation for this. Note that the strings on a Gazzo harp guitar are tied on as in the lute or early Italian guitars rather than having a standard classical guitar saddle. The interesting thing is that with the very tall bridge, the loop knot that forms the point of contact for string vibration is impossible to snug tightly against the bridge. Instead, it forms this little triangle which produces two pitches vibrating in two planes, one at the triangle's tip and one at the base against the bridge. This creates two microtones that sound something like a modern day electric guitar chorus pedal effect. Fabrizio's noticed this as well. Every gazzo we've examined, including his and Tarafo's own, has the same unusual sound. The sound is more complex and brighter, perhaps adding to the illusion of steel strings. But Fabrizio reports that Bersano, the same eyewitness who saw Tarafo play, told him that Tarafo's first string was steel. I'd say he must have been mistaken if not for an extremely interesting unpublished letter I have a copy of here. It describes a fascinating encounter between Tarafo and Mazzani when Mazzani and a friend went to see Tarafo perform and the friend wrote of the sharp and strong sound coming from steel strings. Later at intermission, Mazzani tried and failed to play Tarafo's harp guitar, commenting on the extreme string tension and high action. Presumably, the friend at this point would have corrected his steel string statement if they had actually seen plain gut strings. Finally, there's the photographic evidence. Blowing up my original 8x10, we can see what appears to be thick gut for the high three strings, the others being some sort of overspun strings. As already noted, we know the sub bases were silk and steel, but none of the high neck strings look like steel to me. Curiously, they look shiny, which could be a coating, as varnished gut strings were common at the time, or I wonder, could they be gut strings overspun with metal, a much rarer string configuration known from that era? 
In Genoa, I actually found used copper wound gut strings exactly like this one in the case of one of the Gazzo harp guitars we examined. If Tarafo's instrument had been strung with silver plated copper or similar winding material, perhaps it could have been misidentified by Bersano or Mazzani as steel. For now, this secret of Tarafo remains a mystery. And now what I traveled all the way to Genoa to see and share with all of you. Fabrizio's demonstrations of Tarafo's virtuoso techniques. In Stefania vi è un piccolo rasgheo di tre corde contemporanee, cioè Tarafo praticamente prende anulare medio e indice tre corde per volta vi faccio vedere questo qua three strings tre corde lo rifaccio three strings with more più lento più lento one poi c'è pro prospero anche ok Ci sarà invece quando fa... Vedete questo movimento? Prende a volte queste due corde. So the melody has two, a melody and harmony note played with the trill, flamenco style, but it's almost backwards from flamenco. Yes, è perché Tarafo fece molti concerti anche a Barcellona. Siete un mese intero, one month, ah. in Barcellona a, a fare concerti. Probabilmente conobbe poi anche i chitarristi flamenco. Da qui questa, questa tecnica, l'abbiamo visto anche nel filmato, usare molto spesso questa tecnica che poi è tipica del, anche del tremolo. E differentemente dal flamenco. Il flamenco pizzica le corde al contrario. La sgheato. Tarafo invece... I prossimi due brani, Lorenzita e Marcia Americana, ascolteremo come Taraffo è un grande maestro del ribattuto, cioè lui prende gli accordi e li ribatte molto velocemente con la mano destra. Questa è una tecnica nella quale secondo me lui accendeva e tuttora rimane secondo me insuperato, vista la velocità. Ascoltiamo. a questo passaggio gli viene, riesce a farlo molto veloce per lui bene oppure nella marcia americana very fast Per un percussivo. Un'altra caratteristica tecnica di Pasquale Taraffo era la sua grandissima velocità sulle scale unita anche a un sensibile uso del rubato, del rubato musicale. Ad esempio, nella sonatina in La Maggiore, il taraffo inizia con questa scala. Ci sta. Che non, ha, non è proprio in tempo, no, non in tempo, right. ma è rubato. <ride> Eccetera, no? Ecco, per queste, queste scale, da come abbiamo potuto vedere anche dal video di Stefania, prima, lui nelle scale quando per esempio fa da... faceva nel, nel, nel disco Play. si vede con, con tre dita quindi io penso e, e questo che anche nella scala di della sentina della maggiore lui usi questa formula questo tipo di oh, oh. questo modo di muovere le dita quindi vedete 
Combo is that? Did this score? Now let's move on to tremolos. It seems after talking to you that we have actually four tremolos to discuss. Can we start with that famous ring finger idea? The mandolin yes. pick idea? variazioni, in realtà mi è stato spiegato dal mio maestro Anselmo Bersano che già novantenne mi fece vedere questo tipo di tremolo che era usato dal taraffo. Consiste principalmente nell'usare l'anulare come fosse un plettro, quindi su e giù, su e giù. In, in su diciamo i tempi in battere, le crome in battere e in su le crome in levare, quindi su, giù. Però la cosa interessante è che su questo movimento si introduce il movimento di accompagnamento del pollice e di indice e medio. Tipico del valzo, no? E insieme viene questa cosa qua. è il tremolo continuo, quindi il tremolo continuo senza interruzione. Per fare questo ho preso spunto dal Gran Sol Opera 14 di Bissor, nel quale compare l'accordo insieme al tremolo continuo. E quindi praticamente... Questo movimento viene praticamente M, I, M, I, M, I, il pollice è sempre insieme al medio. Eh, perché in questo modo qua ho sempre la stessa combinazione e ho la comodità di avere sempre il pollice insieme al medio che è il dito più lungo sì. e riesco a cadere sul tempo forte Tarafu then did use traditional tremolo also. Certamente, Tarafu conosceva poi il tremolo tradizionale. In questo brano usiamo proprio la tecnica del tremolo tradizionale, cioè pollice, anulare, medio, indice. Pollice, anulare, medio. What every classical guitarist learns. E Muzzano è un chitarrista italiano, tra l'altro è stato anche l'insegnante del chitarrista genovese Carlo Paladino. E questo tremolo prevede le sestine, quindi 1, 2, 3. La caratteristica è che sopra possiamo metterci... Yes. 
esempio in un accordo posso portarlo ancora più veloce wow. So this is one of Tarafo's key secrets. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning some of the secrets of Tarafo as much as I have. Uh, I wanted to thank Franco for allowing us into his home and participating, and of course all of his expertise and passion for this project, and Fabrizio for the, uh, his expertise and amazing talent, and the time it has taken him to study this, take it seriously, and learn these performance practices of a historical figure like Tarafo, who bridges the gap for me and many of us between classical uh, discipline and, and the artistry of vaudeville and virtuosity in a the more theatrical and popular manner. <laughs>